Hello, hello. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to put together a tutorial that walks through how you can take a paper pattern from Berta Style Magazine from one of the pattern sheets that's included in the magazine and um, basically trace it off onto um, into a digital format so you can essentially have your own PDF pattern and then um, use it to project if you use a projector. Um, yeah, so here goes nothing. One of the first things to keep in mind is that you have to take the, the pattern piece out of the magazine and it's not perfectly flat. So the first step to even being able to do this accurately is to take this pattern sheet and iron it flat. Now remember, when you're ironing paper, you don't need to steam it, so make sure there's no water in your iron. It can just be a dry, really hot iron. I usually put it on a cotton setting and you know, don't let it sit too long in any one piece of the paper and then just try to smooth it out as best you can. Berta style pattern sheets in the magazine um, you come folded up, but they also have two sides. So this is one side, this is the other side. To get your pattern sheet as flat as possible, I recommend ironing both sides. Um, that's going to give you um, the most uh, possibility for accuracy when you start your tracing onto your computer. Now that your pattern is nice and flat, all you have to do is just fold it along this line where it says to cut. Look at how much less wrinkly it is now that we've ironed it. Absolutely imperative in my opinion. What you need to do now is figure out what parts of the pattern sheet you actually need to trace. I'm doing this 113A top and the information is on the next page about which lines I need to trace from Berta, in case you're new to working with Berta patterns. So it tells me here that I need to look for the red pattern line on sheet B, and I need to look for pattern pieces 21 to 25. And then I need to also figure out which size I want to trace. I could technically trace all sizes, but it does take a while. I'm not going to lie, this is not exactly a fast process. I usually just trace out my size, but you could always do all of them if you would like. You can find your size by going to the measurements page and assuming you've already taken your body measurements. And I, I recommend doing this regularly so you know what your current size is because, you know, our bodies fluctuate and that's totally normal and natural. Um, and then, you know, based on your measurements, figure out what size you want to create. Don't go off of, you know, what you buy from ready to wear. That's generally not accurate. Um, so go off your inches or centimeters in measurement. Um, and oftentimes for Berta patterns, it'll tell you what you should be you know, basing your eventual size that you trace off of, which measurement you should base it from. Most often for tops, it's going to be the bust and for any sort of pants or bottoms, it's going to be your hip. Um, and since this is a top, I fall in the, let's see here. They've actually fixed this. I actually wrote to them because this, these numbers are weird, but I'm usually about a, a size, uh, a Berta size 40 in tops. Once you figure out your size, you can look and see which line, in this case, it's like this um, sort of, I don't know, kind of reminds me of railroad tracks, this line for size 40. And so that's the one I'm going to be looking for on the red pattern line on sheet B for these pattern pieces. We want to look for our pattern pieces with that red line, the red pattern line on sheet B. So you can see way over there, we're on sheet B. Um, other, you know, if I needed to be on a different sheet, I would flip it over uh, like, for instance, if I needed sheet C, I would just unfold this and resituate things. But I'm on the correct sheet. So now I need to look for pattern pieces 21 through 25 according to the instructions. So 
what you need to do here and it can be you know visually overwhelming but trust me it does actually make sense there are also instructions here that let me know that 21a and 21b um and 22a and 22b are separated so i'll need to connect those um if i were doing this the traditional way of tracing paper i would just trace those out and then stick the two pieces together with tape um, but I can actually do that on the computer. So, but I do need to realize that I need to look for those separate pieces for um, for this top. So, as you can see here, 21A, 21B, 22A, 22B, they're separated, and that'll make it a lot <laughs> make a lot more sense when you're looking for it on the pattern sheet. Okay, so back to it. I'm looking for red because I'm looking for pattern uh, pattern pieces that are red. So I can see up here that I have 21A, basically what you do is you just kind of go down the pattern sheet until you find 21A, and here it is. So now I can kind of try to blur my eyes a little bit and look only for this pattern piece, and I can tell that this is the gluing edge, so this is going to be the connecting, this straight line is going to be the edge where I need to connect the two 21A and 21B pieces together. So I'm going to end up tracing this up here and I'm going to follow again my pattern line, my size 40, and then trace, 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 follow, keep following the lines, ignoring all the other stuff around it, keep tracing, 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 and then back to the beginning. The schematic will let you know like seam lines that I always like to mark when I'm tracing out my pieces digitally. Um, you know, you're going to want to mark the grain line, you're going to want to mark any notches, that's what these guys are, and um, yeah, just any, you know, that's another notch. So pay attention to those things because that'll be important to include on your pattern pieces um, because you're going to want to have that information when you cut everything out. And then, you know, make sure to label your pattern pieces, what the numbers are, and uh, also label the size. And um, generally when I trace these out, I don't add seam allowance right away. I add it later and then I add information about how much seam allowance I've included. Okay, now to get everything set up with the projector so I can start tracing. So I have my projector on. This is my setup. Um, this is in a laundry room, so it's nothing glamorous. Um, and it's connected to my computer over here. And then it projects down onto my table and my cutting mat. Something that's important to note here is that I have already calibrated my projector. I know how tall my table needs to be. I work with a um, an adjustable standing desk actually um, so I can move it up and down and uh, project at a height that's good for cutting but then also move it up if I want to like work on anything standing up or so standing up or whatever anyway it's it's pretty sweet that way so I feel very lucky that I have a setup that works so well and it's so flexible for my needs but anyway um, I have already set this up and and um, calibrated it so it is accurate and that's what this grid is on the mat. I use this every time I turn on my projector to make sure that I haven't bumped the table or bumped the projector. Not that I like bump the projector because it's on the ceiling um, but you know it's just always good to double check and this tells me you know everything is accurate, the lines are accurate um, or is as close to accurate as they can be and um, that means that this is basically ready to go. So I won't use the grid lines anymore, but what I will do, I, I like to trace my uh, pattern pieces into Affinity Designer. And I've also calibrated Affinity D Designer to know what my zoom percentage should be um, to match up with what things look like when I save them as a PDF and bring them into Adobe PDF to then project onto my cu cutting mat. Um, so I'll go into that in a little more detail in just a second. All right, now I'm in Affinity Designer. I use Affinity Designer 2, but you could use the original if that's what you have. Um, they both operate pretty similarly. Um, anyway, I have created a new document and uh, I have set up an artboard. And if I select it um, and I go down to the transform panel, 
I can see that the width and height are set to 200 inches. This is, I think, the max that Adobe can handle when you project a pattern. So I always just set it to the max, and this generally gives me enough margin so that I can move the pattern around in Adobe when I'm projecting onto my table. Um, however, if you, if you look at my mat, uh, this is 200 by 200 inches, and I should say, if you ever need to switch your um, units of measurement, just go into the left-hand side of your affinity and uh, right-click it, and then you can change it. But I already have it set to inches, so it's no big deal. But this is 200 by 200 inches. Clearly, this is incorrect on my mat. So you do have to adjust your zoom in affinity to make sure that, uh, and, and calibrate it correctly to make sure that you are zoomed in to the correct percentage that then allows you to trace at a one-to-one -one ratio essentially like an inch equals an inch kind of thing um so actually what i like to do um just to make sure that i'm calibrating properly um i will go ahead and create a rectangle and i'm holding down my shift key i'm on a mac um Obviously, this is a little large uh, on on my um, mat. It's pretty tiny, but um, I'm going to change this to two inches by two inches, and that's the square that I want. And I can zoom in on Affinity. I'm pressing Command and Plus to zoom, and I'm going to actually make this a really obnoxious fill, so that way I know that that's what that is. So clearly, obviously, it's still really tiny and I could zoom in even more. This needs to be two inches by two inches on my mat. In order to do that, I can press the zoom tool and my zoom percentage shows up um, up here. So my zoom percentage, I've already calculated this, you'll need to do some testing on your own to figure out what percentage makes the most sense for you in your particular setup. Um, but I've calculated mine and I've written it down too because I can never remember this. But I need to set the affinity zoom to 16.7%. So I just type it in there and press return. Now it says 17, but actually it's 16.7. It just doesn't show those like strange increments. So if you, you can actually see your zoom down here as well and see what, you know, portion of the screen you're displaying. Um, and you can adjust that down here too, if you need to. 16.7. You can save your current viewpoint. So, um, I don't know if it'll let me rename it. Uh, if I need to get back to it, basically, I can, like, let's say I zoomed in a lot and I needed to get back to that viewpoint, I just click it and then boom, I'm right back there at 16.7%. Always just double check, make sure things look accurate though. So what I'm going to do, whoops, see, I just accidentally pressed the zoom button. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to press V. So I'm out of the zoom tool and what I can do is drag this around now I'm looking over at my at my mat and my cutting table and I can see that this two inch by two inch square fits perfectly on my mat's grid and that's what we're looking for when you before you start tracing anything you want to make sure you're calibra calibrated properly um, and uh, in your affinity designer or whatever program you want to use to do this, but I use Affinity. Once you know that everything is set up properly that way, then you can start tracing. So let's let's work on that. But what I like to do before I start tracing anything is always double check where I am that my zoom is correct. And I like to just um, drag a guideline down onto the canvas. So I can set up, sometimes I'll just drag it up a little higher here, um, so that I can uh, have a straight edge to line up my, uh, my actual affinity paper pattern to um, when I start tracing. So if you can't find the straight grain, just find a straight line to work with. All right, so. I'm actually going to shift this up 
this line up. I don't want it too close to the edge because sometimes it'll jump around on me then when I'm tracing my pattern. So, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And then I can kind of like shift my paper pattern into place. So, what you want to do, um, I've already lined up the a straight edge uh, of the pattern to the guideline that I put into Affinity. And this just makes uh, it a million times easier to kind of make sure that you're working with straight lines and rotate things later when you need to. So I'm going to start at the corner um, up here and I'm using my pen tool. Uh, I've set the stroke to, we can actually make fill none. Um, whoops. But I've set the, oops, <laughs> I've set the stroke to um, black and let's make sure that this is, I like, uh, I like to project at a five point width. Um, with, I like to see my lines at five points, so you can adjust that to whatever you prefer, but I like five points. So I've got my pen tool. I'm going to make my first node there, and then I'm going to go up to my size, and then I click again. I'm going to keep following that line, and I'm going to click again, and I'm going to kind of follow this line again. Sometimes it can be a little difficult to see with all the pattern lines on the paper. Um, and actually, I'm going to make that curved. So I'm going to click again, and then I'm going to click and hold, and then kind of drag until I get a curve that's sort of close to where I want it to be, and then I can adjust this later. And then to make it so that I can have a straight line again, I'm just going to click the node again, and it gets rid of that extra handle and follow 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 and I should be about right here there's a little distortion in my paper pattern piece because it, it's not totally flat there since it's kind of like right against the edge of my table um, but that looks close and I can adjust it later too so again I'm going to sort of follow that line looks to be about right here and I'm going to hold it again because it's like a very slight curve and that you want this to be as accurate as possible and you can always mess around with the accuracy of this later but if you can sort of get it in the right place from the beginning that's never a bad thing and I'm going to follow that line again and it comes all the way down to here so I'll just go ahead and maybe I'll try to put a curve actually I'm going to make that so it doesn't Basically, I want to I want to have a sharp corner right there. So, and oh no! And this is <laughs> so this is one thing that you have to worry about if you drag your mouse too far over on the screen and and while you're doing something, it can shift your view. And this is why it's really nice to have that viewpoint viewpoint. So I'm going to double click that, and boom, it brings me right back to where I was. I have a very weird <laughs> line, um, but. We can adjust that later so let's go back to our our line and uh, let's just go ahead and close it out and let's see that looks I'm probably gonna have to adjust some of this so let's go in and start adjusting I'm gonna press a and that gives me my node tool and I can kind of look here and actually now that I don't need this guide anymore I'm going to just get rid of it. So to get rid of it, you just grab it and then you can kind of drag it up off the screen. So let's go back to the A tool. So what I did there is I joined the corners uh, so that this is all one piece. 
All right, it's all moving as one, so that's what we want. That's the goal. Now let's click on viewpoint again, because I want this to be back um, accurate on my pattern sheet. And if I go to the A tool, um, I can see that my line is like a little off here. So I can kind of drag this around and drag this around as well. And that looks like it matches up a lot better. Um, actually, I'm going to delete that so it's just a nice straight line here. All right, so that looks good. Uh, this looks like I could adjust it ever so slightly. So I just kind of drag it around and then off cook it. And so I can see how it's lining up with the actual pattern piece. Now, this is where things kind of went haywire <laughs> when I was dragging. And you can see that that's, uh, I need it to, I wanted it to be an angle here. So All right. Now I need to follow what this pattern piece was originally doing. So kind of this is where you can kind of mess around with things and actually Sometimes you just have to add nodes and oops, I'm on the wrong one here. There we go. And this node could probably be adjusted. So yeah, there we go. All right. Now I need to flatten this out a little bit more so I can make sure this line is actually doing what I need it to do. So this could probably be shifted up slightly and then I can drag this down just a little bit and whoops bonkers here we go and then move that up a little bit so that's the that's the shape that we want we can always compare it to what it would look like um, on the schematic and so far this is looking accurate all right so coming, whoops, I shifted things around again, so I'm going to go back to my viewpoint. Um, looks like my line is a little off here, so I need to adjust this. So I'm going to press A again, and whoops, A, and I'm going to grab this point. And adjust it until it hits where I need it to be. So about right there. And yeah, it looks like it's got just a really slight curve. You can always double check that on the schematic and schematic shows just a really slight curve on that sleeve all right so I'm gonna off click and I need to adjust this as well so let's go ahead and I might add a new point here there we go And I'll grab this guy and that point was kind of small 
So I'm gonna bring it back here. This looks about where I need it to be. Again, I'm gonna off click and just see where my lines are lining up and looks like they are lining up as they should. This one actually might need a little adjustment here. All right, so that's following the correct line. That looks to be accurate, that looks to be accurate. Okay, so that's, <laughs> that's one piece of 21A. And then what we wanna do is go through and look for um, the notches that we need to pay attention to. So I know based on the schematic that there's one right next to the neckline and it's this red notch right here. So I'm gonna press my P and I'm just gonna, oops, just gonna draw a notch. And then I can off click and make sure that that is where I need it to be. And that is correct. All right, there, let's see if there are any other notches. There's one on the lower sleeve that we need to be aware of. And it's sometimes they're very, very small and it's difficult to see them. So I'm just gonna make my notch. I move that down a little bit so I'm just nudging it with my arrow keys on my keyboard and that's in a better position and what other notches are there then there's one on kind of a side bend curve here so I'm gonna get my pen tool open or ready um, and I'm just gonna mark this notch as well. I also wanna mark the seam lines, or the, the numbers of the seam lines, so I'm gonna press my T, um, tool, my text tool, essentially, and that is number one, or whoops, that, <laughs> put it in the wrong spot easy enough to move so one should be here and actually I'm gonna rotate this and I'm holding my shift key to make it straight I'm gonna press shift and alt and drag and then I'm gonna make another number here all right so this one should be number three perfect now I'm going to press shift and alt or option and I'm going to change this to 5. Get my triangle tool and I'm just going to draw a triangle and place it right where that triangle is and then shrink it down a little bit. That's about right and then I'm just going to nudge it until it is where it needs to be. It's hard sometimes to tell because you can't get super zoomed in here, unfortunately, without shifting your pattern around. So there we go, that looks good. And now we need to find that grain line. And I'm gonna start from up here and follow that line all the way to about right there. Now, just double checking one more time. So we added in shoulder notch, sleeve notch, waist notch or side notch. We added in the seam markings, seam numbers, one, three, five. And we added in how we wanna match up uh, uh, the other side of 21a so 21b and the grain line now theoretically if we were to rotate this now i can kind of zoom out again 
Um, so if I were to select all of this and rotate it and hold my shift key, this should give me, in theory, this, this line should be completely vertical. It's a little off, so what I can do is I can adjust the rotation point to right about at the neck, and then I can rotate it around that point until it's totally straight with my guideline. And this will make it a lot easier to line things up later. Okay, now these should line up. Oops. All right, so let's, I'm just gonna, I have two separate layers here. So 21B and 21A. And actually, let's just label it down here. Let's call this 21 front. And now, this should line up perfectly if we did it right. This is what we would be doing if we were pasting That looks pretty darn good. I might actually just shift this edge up ever so slightly to be in line with this one. I'm just gonna make it so I can see what I wanna do here because I'm shaving off just a teeny bit. Should be equal across the bottom. That looks about right to me. So I'm going to get my node tool and shift it up. Shift it up slightly. And I'll do the same for this edge and line it up with that purple line that I created. There. Now I can delete the purple line. And these are now true it up but yeah that looks pretty darn good to me um we can delete this since we know what it is and what we can do here is i'll just extend this line so i can find this line and then I can hide it, and then I can delete this line here, and there we go. I don't know, this is off-center, it's bugging me. Now we can connect, we can basically get rid of this line. I'm gonna break the curve on this one. Because I don't need I don't need this line connected anymore. I'm gonna do the same for up here. Break the curve and let's go ahead and hide 21A for right now. And this should give us a separate line. See how it's not connected to the rest of the piece? I can just delete that now. So if I go back to 21A and make it visible. We're going to do the same thing, but I'm going to actually hide 21B now. And then we're going to break this line here. So just select that and break curve. Select this, break curve. Now we should be able to just select this line and delete it. Let's go ahead and make 21B visible. And here's where we want to join our curves. Join curves. There we go. And I can delete one of those nodes. So now that's, you can see that's connected. But we got to still do that up here as well. I'm going to 
let's go ahead and oops highlight both of those and join now there's a funny jog there so i think i'm going to delete that guy yep there we go perfect now let's try this again yeah so it's all all one now let's go ahead and make a new layer we'll call it 21 front and let's move all these pieces actually before we do that we don't need these anymore we can delete them remove everything into this layer here so these should be completely empty and nothing should happen when we click on them so now we can delete them and yep everything's in that layer so that's perfect that's exactly what we want you're going to repeat this process for all the pattern pieces and you know if things are on a fold you mark it on a fold essentially you just trace everything the way it looks from the bird of pattern sheet and then you go in and you start adding seam allowances within affinity designer once you have everything digitized that's what's up next after i get all these little pattern pieces traced so i've traced all the pattern pieces for this particular pattern and we're just gonna clean it up a little bit and make it uh, projector ready. Let's go ahead and adjust the sleeve. Uh, we already have our notches and our seam number included. Um, the instructions for this pattern are to cut um, a s from a single layer of fabric. That's usually not the case. Usually, you know, it's suggested that you cut on the uh, folded fabric. Um, and then then the sleeve is auto mirrored but i always prefer to cut on a single layer when i'm using a projector just because it's way easier pattern placement is easier anyway um so i almost always mirror sleeves um but this pattern actually requires it which is um unusual so uh what i do is i select the sleeve and i've put each of the pattern pieces into their own layer um so if i I can just kind of click and drag to select all or I could just click the layer to select all um, and then I will hold shift and option and what that does is it duplicates the piece and then um, all I have to do is uh, click flip horizontal and that mirrors it for me if I want to I can also flip the text around to make it accurate let's go and um, look at how we work with pieces that are on the fold so this the right side of this pattern piece is the center back fold on the straight grain i'm going to put that information right here and then all we have to do is again just select everything and because this is the this would normally be cut on a fold um, we're just going to do the same thing again. We're going to um, shift and option and drag to duplicate the piece. And then I'm going to flip it. I like to get in really close and I use my arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge. Make sure that that fold line is lined up. And so that's an accurate fold. And now again, I have not added seam allowances yet. And it's important that you kind of get all this other stuff situated before you start adding seam allowances. That'll make your life a heck of a lot easier down the road. So, um, so yeah, this, oops, this is the straight green and the center back fold. So I'm actually going to throw an arrow in here just so I know that this is the straight grain and let's go ahead and we'll fill that too with black just so it's really obvious cool and then the thing that we want to do with this actually when you have a folded piece in order to accu accurately create seam allowance down the road and let's actually flip this around too
we're gonna break the nodes again and just make sure that all of this is joined together. I had this one first. And then I want to break right here. So I'm gonna break that curve. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to break this curve as well. Whoops, break it. Now I can, actually let's go ahead and shorten this so that way we know that that's the grain line. All right, and we'll hide that one and then we'll show the other side and we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. So break the curve, click the node and break the curve. There we go. And we can just delete this line entirely uh, since we don't need it. And then we'll make this other section appear. So now we want to be able to join these two curves. So I'm going to select both of those nodes and we're going to say join curve and we're going to do that for up here as well. So select it and join curves. Now if we were to click this, this entire thing is one piece, which is what we want. And I'm just going to extend this again. Here we go. I'm just going to extend this too, just so it'll be easier to mark the centers later. So that's how you create a, or unfold piece, I guess is what I should say. You unfold that piece. I'm going to do the same thing for the back collar. I'll be back once I get this uh, unfolded. All right, it's time for hem allowances or seam allowances and actually both. So we'll do seam allowances first and then hem allowances um, in a second. So um, what you want to do is go ahead and just select just the um, just the curves. Uh, you don't need to select all the numbers. Uh, that's unnecessary. So um, select uh, any pattern piece that needs the seam allowance added and all of them do so. Uh, Berta typically does not include seam allowances in most of their pattern pieces. So um, the instructions for this one were that uh, the seams and edges need to be a 5 8 inch seam allowance and hem and sleeve hems need to be 1 and 5 8. So we're just going to do the basic 5 8 inch seam allowance right now and then I'll show you how to do the hem allowance in a second. So again, just select the the curves of the pattern piece that you want to add the seam allowance to and then let's what you need to do basically is uh, we're going to create a copy of this just sitting right on top of the original curves so I'm just going to do command C command V and then oh if my computer decides to behave there we go um, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and create that seam allowance from the copy that we just made so what you have to do is click the contour tool and we're going to set the radius is essentially that's what your seam allowance is. So I've already calculated it 5 eighths inches 0.625 so let's go 0 0.625 and um, we're going to do oops actually you have to do this other stuff first so we're going to make it uh, square join and um, we're going to force closed and let's enter that seam allowance again and press enter and there you go. You can see that that's been added. Um, sometimes you have to adjust some of these but for the most part it, it generally looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and bake the appearance here and that just allows us to um, come in and edit as needed. So this is a little funky so I'm going to come in and adjust that to look a little bit more natural and I think it's just because there is this like extra node there but um, 
but yeah that looks pretty darn good now this is where i like to come in and create the dash seam line so um, i've got my stroke palette open and i can go ahead and adjust the way it looks and just create that dotted or dashed line and then you can go ahead and increase it however much you want that looks pretty good to me and there we go so this is the stitching line and then this is our seam allowance and if you ever want to double check on you know to see if it was added correctly you can always create a little box and let's make it a width of our seam allowance so 5 8 inch you can rotate it and see if it, there we go it's a perfect 5 8 inch so um, whoops so there we go that's all you have to do for the seam allowance and you just repeat that um, and the main thing to keep in mind here um, is if you have something that was cut on the fold that's why you have to break all those nodes apart because otherwise you're going to get a seam allowance for the center line as well um, and that's not ideal so I'll just go ahead and show you how to do another one really quickly let's do copy and paste again my computer is slow all right and we're gonna go to the contour tool let's do square everything and then uh, force closed and then add in our seam allowance and voila looks really good awesome and then let's bake the appearance perfect now let's go in and select that inner one our original seam line and we'll make it dashed and there perfect looks awesome so really it's a pretty simple process um, just to add your seam allowance and of course if you preferred a you know a larger seam allowance or a smaller seam allowance then you just adjust it um, as as you'd like but that's a that's basically how to do that let's go in and it's actually similar to what I showed you when you want to check your seam allowance so let's see what did we say it was Hem and sleeve one and five eighths inches. All right, so let's add that. Perfect. And I like to usually fill this with a different color just so it's really easy to see. And there we go. And now all all I do generally is just kind of eyeball it. Um, And just kind of drag copies of this sort of down from the original stitching line. Oops, that one should be more like this. There we go. And then you just grab your node tool again, and you can actually just select all the nodes and drag them down all at once. And I'm, yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good to me. Awesome. And that's how to add a quick hem allowance there. Yeah, it's a little funky on the sides just slightly, but I don't particularly care. That's like very negligible as far as I'm concerned. So that looks really good. And then you just go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. So might as well do that. Oh, here. Oops. I just like these. There we go. And just rotate completely. So I do the same thing. Just a general idea, you know, just to get a close estimation of what that adjusted seam allowance would be. All right, so again, you select the outer line. Select all the nodes that are part of it and just drag it right down. And bam, all set. Move these guys out of the way. That looks really good. 
that's how you add seam allowance pretty simple you just choose export and then i mine's already set to pdf but export is pdf and then just include layers so you can turn your layers on and off as you'd like um and then open it in Adobe, set it to your preferred zoom percentage that you've calibrated for with your projector. And then you should be good to go if you've calibrated properly for Affinity or whatever program you're using to do this. So I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So right now this is a calibrated projection. So I want to make sure that the PDF that I'm using is accurate and my and matches the actual paper pattern from Berta. So what I do to do this is I find the pattern on the sheet and then I roughly get it set up here. Shift it around, line it up with the, the stitching line, which is the dotted line that we created that's why it's nice to make it dotted. It's just easier to differentiate between the two. And I can see here that everything is as expected. It's accurate. It's calibrated. I've traced it. And this is ready to project, ready to cut, ready to sew. And it's awesome. So everything is lining up with the pattern stitching lines. This is obviously the seam allowance that I've added to the sleeve. But the green line is accurate, the notches that I've added here are accurate, and yeah. Now it's just stoke, 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 stoke. And that's how you do it. I hope that helps. Happy sewing, happy projecting, happy having a PDF in front of you to use over and over again. Um, I should say that, you know, if you wanted to, you could always still trace your pattern from Berta onto tracing paper. And then, you know, if you decide that it's a pattern that you want to use over and over again, then you can create the PDF. Um, because it does take time, as you can tell. It's not exactly a quick process. But it means that you have something to use um, over and over and over again. And you don't have to store anything other than this pattern sheet if you want to. You could always throw this out, I suppose, if you want. But uh, And then, you know, I always like to photograph the instructions and uh, keep that in a... A digital file as well along with the the pdf so that way everything is digitized so anyway uh time for me to stop talking and time for me to get sewing yay